mine, oh Jesus is mine, 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 Jesus is mine, Jesus is my Savior, day by day, mine, 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 oh Jesus, we put our hands together. travel I was yeah I was from Tanzania I always mix up where I'm coming from this time I was from Tanzania I was ministering there on Sunday with a good time there and uh, pray for me I'm leaving on Friday I'm going to Malawi there's a convention in Malawi and I also have a couples meeting so I'll be in Malawi uh, Friday Saturday then Sunday, I'm in, I'm in South Africa because there's a wedding of Brother Moses Masunda and the sister Shamiso Fatai Marabwa. So we're going to be supporting their wedding there, but I'll be back home on Sunday again. So we had a good time in um, uh, Tanzania. We opened Second Kings chapter two. I'll read from verse fourteen. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he had also, when he had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come the word that we have read, the anointed word, the written word. Father, into your hands that will come, Lord Father, and break the bread of life to your hungry children who are under expectation, who have needs and desires. Father, we also want to grow in the stature of the fullness of Christ. I commit the service to the Lord Father, anoint and give us all our desires in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Um, last Saturday we had a wedding of Brother Farai and Sister Standway Gossi here at City Tabernacle. I could thank you to those who supported. Saturday was a very hectic program. I think I was at the surgery, then I had the wedding here, then I went to Tanzania arriving at 3 a.m. in Tanzania, ministering two services and leaving at 9 p.m., arriving in Arare 1 a.m. on Monday, being at the surgery in the morning. That was a very hectic program. Um, today, my subject is, where is the God of Elijah? But maybe before I get to that subject, I uh, want to thank God for the good testimonies and his presence in the Tanzania meeting. Tanzania is a very special nation in that those who read the spoken word always hear about Tanganyika, Tanganyika. I think more than 21 times the prophet about 21 times the prophet desired actually to even go there. It is mentioned about 21 times or so. Now I will check it but in another quotation he even says mark it in your Bible that is in uh, Africa trip report 5311 14 says mark it in your Bible that you hear this that I was in India or somewhere this is um, he's predicting that either in India or somewhere in East Africa Tanganyika 
He even mentions that that's where Brother Malson Pose was doing the work of God there and it was flourishing. So he desired a lot to go to Tang Tanganyika. In another quotation, he says he wanted to have a convention, an all Africa one, in Ta uh, Tanganyika, which is Tanzania. Then he says uh, there will be brothers from Rhodesia and brothers from Congo. So we're amazed in that meeting that there were brothers from Rhodesia. Rhodesia was Zambia and Zimbabwe. So there were pastors from Zambia and Zimbabwe. And there were many pastors from Congo. I think the elders were, there were 20 something. Number of pastors. It was so many pastors who attended that convention. And um, the presence of God came in such a mighty way. You've seen the videos when we streamed the videos. A lot of things happened in a short space of time. In the Sunday morning. Then when I was ministering in the afternoon, uh, as I was ministering, I felt a strange warfare atmosphere. So I moved from my subject, started addressing those who are bound in witchcraft. Then a man just came and says, I'm tired of this witchcraft, surrendered his life, ready for baptism. I prayed for him. <laughs> I said, the works of God are amazing. You know, you are busy with your notes, busy moving. Then the spirit takes you somewhere where there is someone who is held there. So the man gave his life. And many people gave, the, the, the brothers there were working very hard. I want to just um, uh, appreciate what they have done. They did a very big work there. So this weekend, today I was very busy. That's why I was um, so late. I was printing, we're finishing the last touches of our couple's companion. Remember, I wrote the couple's companion one, couple's companion two, and I've started, we're starting couple's companion three, and we wrote another book which is called The Power of Unconditional Love for Couples. But because I promised the couple that is wedding that I will give them a copy, so we have printed quite a number of copies and the, I'll give the first number of them in Malawi because I'll carry many of them to Malawi and at home of course charity begins at home I'm going to bring some of them at home it's been a lot of work he will appreciate the books as they come and this week I'll be releasing about three animations so I've been very very busy this week and um, uh, let me just get to my subject um let me also mention that next week um, on Thursday we'll start the revival in Luveve. So we're going to give you the details. It will be 6 o'clock Thursday, 6 o'clock Friday, 6 o'clock Saturday in Luveve. So we're going to be having the revival in Luveve. Now, when we read the Bible, um, Elisha he has been following Elijah. But he sees that it's not enough to follow Elijah without the God of Elijah. So, he, he, he's been following, actually the scholars are saying for about six years, he has been following Elijah. From the time the clock of Elijah touched him and he bent all the, his yoke of oxen and he, he gave people the meat and he started following Elijah. But he was not content we're just following a man of God without the God of the man. It's not enough to have the Bible without the God of the Bible. It's not enough to have the spoken word without the God of the spoken word. There should be something powerful about a believer and God hates Paul's religion. So we find that um, he was a time-tested believer, Elisha. Because as soon as he was touched by the clock of Elisha, he forsake everything. Like a believer having total separation with everything of their past life. He had to bend so that he can't go back to that life. It was not a sinful life, but it was a lower life than the life that he has found. Some of the things that we left the world are not sinful, but they were too low for what we, we were experiencing. We, are, we, we have no problem with playing soccer, but we left it because it was too low for what we are now being called for. We have no problem with sports. There is nothing sinful there, but we have no time for that. We are called for something higher. There is a high calling for a believer. There is a high calling. So when, when he says, where is the God of Elijah? You are speaking for a, for a position of an interested person 
who has done everything to meet that God. These days where people are saying, where is the God of Elijah when they have done nothing? They have not repented. They have not lived right. They have not even sought the ways of God. They have not even met God's requirement. But Elijah had done everything that could be done, Elijah. And he didn't even feel an advantage of having a name similar to Elijah. He says, no, it's not enough. So even if he was always pouring water in the hands of Elijah, he says, no, that's not enough. Even if he was there in Gilgal with Elijah, walking with Elijah, and Elijah says, remain there. He says, no, I'm not remaining. I'm going to walk with you. As long as the Lord lives, I'll be with you. And when they reached Bethel, Elijah says, remain here. He could not be discouraged even by the prophet himself. He could not be discouraged by Elijah. He kept moving. And when he met the sons of the prophets, you know, sons of the prophets were so studious that they knew the exact day of the rapture. Amen. Just by quotes and scriptures. They knew that Elijah is taken today. So when he went to Jericho also, and Elijah says, remain here, he says, no, I'm not remaining. So it's someone who has been made discouraging things but kept moving on. That is a diehard believer of the message. Then in Jordan River there, where the 50 sons of the prophets were watching, he saw a miracle. Remember, Elijah, Elisha was accustomed to miracles. He was seeing miracles almost every day. Because he was under the ministry of Elijah. Actually, you cannot be a continuation of a ministry that you are not under. You have to be submissive under that ministry For you to be a continuation For Joshua to continue the ministry of Moses He had to be under the ministry of Moses Submissive For the men of David to continue the acts of David They had to be under David Submissive For the disciples to do greater works They had to be under Christ Submissive For, uh, for, for Elijah to, Elijah to continue Elijah's work He has to be under that ministry For us to continue and be the final voice we have to be under the message of the hour Amen. so Elijah had seen a lot in verse 9 actually in 2nd Kings chapter 2 uh, is ask when he has crossed over Jordan that ask what I shall do you, to, for you then he asked for a double portion there is a secret there he is actually asking for what Elijah doesn't have because he's saying, Elijah, what you have, give me double of what you have. <laughs> you see, a minister under the anointing can give you what he doesn't have. Because it's not he that is giving, it's God that is giving. So he says, you have to watch me. When you see me going, you shall get it. You have to follow attentively for you to get the blessing of that. So Elijah was sure that even when he was now carrying the clock, actually he actually saw with his eyes the pillar of fire he saw with his eyes the chariots of fire and he says the horsemen of Israel the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof but that was not enough to say brothers with my eyes I saw the pillar of fire so that settles it it doesn't settle it Amen. it has to be something inside you what you saw with your eyes is great what you experienced in your nerves is great but what matters is what is in your heart. So he actually was carrying the actual clock of Elijah. Sometimes you are carrying the actual books of Elijah. The actual word of God. But you still need the God of Elijah. You still need the God of the spoken word. The God of the Bible. So he walked with Elijah. But it was still not enough. Maybe he hunted with Elijah. And was telling the stories that when we were hunting with Elijah, he actually spoke this into existence. But that was still not enough. Amen. He still needed the God of Elijah. There are people who tell you stories that I was there in the meetings of our prophet. I was there. With, that still is great. I desire that myself also. But that's not enough. We need something bigger than that. You would tell people that I was pouring water in the hands of Elijah. That is a great privilege, but it's not enough. You are saying, I was ordained by Elijah. Because God told Elijah to do three things. He says, go and anoint um, 
Elisha to be a prophet in your stead and go and anoint Hazael to be a king of Syria. Go and anoint Jehu to be a king, oh, is it Samari oh, of Israel? Yes. So Elijah only did one of the things that God told him to do. God says, Elijah, Elijah, go and do these three things. He only did one. He anointed Elisha. When he has anointed Elisha, Elisha did the unfinished work of Elijah was finished by Elisha. Elisha to then go and anoint, I think he anointed Hazael. And when he was anointing him, he was actually crying that I see what we shall do to the people of God. Being anointed doesn't mean you are the right person. You can still do wrong things. He was actually crying, saying, mm, I see what we shall do, but anyway, let's anoint you. <laughs> anointed ones at the end times. Then, he, Elisha did not do the other part also. He, it was done, he, he commissioned one of the sons of the prophets to go and anoint Jehu. So those are three kinds of believers that have been anointed there. So, you see, the unfinished work of Elijah is finished by Elisha. What was not finished in the days of Brother Pranam is finished by the bride as they ride the trail again. So in God's eyes, the work was done by Elijah. Because he anointed the one who will do what he did not do. So when Christ says, greater work shall I do, is Christ doing the works in you. So Elisha was aware that though he was actually anointed by Elijah, he still did not have the God of Elijah. Yeah, he, felt, he was once touched by the message of Elijah. He felt something touching him when Elijah was ministering. It was a cloak of Elijah. But he still didn't have the God of Elijah after that touch. Now, he even saw the prophecies of Elijah coming to pass. But that was not enough for him to meet real life challenges. Because when he had a real overflood at Jordan, the explaining how he saw God doing in Elijah was not enough. Explaining what you felt or you had in another or the emotions is not enough. You need a practical and a living God. Actually, um, he saw the miracles of Elijah. He was anointed, he was ordained by Elijah. You hear brothers who say, I was actually ordained by the prophet. That's powerful, but that's not enough to meet real life situation. So, when Elijah, when Elijah was saying, where is the God of Elijah? He had seen a situation that can only be answered by the God of Elijah. One day you meet a situation where theology and knowing the Bible only cannot open that situation. Or where all your previous testimonies are good enough but cannot open that situation. You need a present God, a present help in time of need. When he met that Jordan, he knew that God who has done this can do it again. There are situations that you shall meet where you can say, even if I'm carrying the very cloak, of Elijah. I need the very God. He actually carried the cloak the way Elijah used to carry it. But the waters were still looking at him. You can carry the Bible the way the prophet used to carry it. And the waters will still look at you. You can carry the spoken word. You can shout the way Sister Hetty shouted. But your situation will still look at you. You can speak the way Oscar spoke and your situation will still look at you. You need the same God to be in action. And that God himself is the one who performs. We have so many people who are copying what God did in a certain ministry. And they are not getting the results because they don't have the God of that person. But brother, the God of Elijah is the God of Abraham, is the God of Isaac, is the God of Jacob. But why didn't God bring Abraham five times? The spirit of Abraham or the spirit of Jacob five times. <laughs> but there is a special spirit of Elijah which is a fearless anointing. 
that can confront any situation. The God of Elijah is a jealous God. He doesn't want you to be between two opinions. When you worship him, worship him in truth and spirit. The God of Elijah is a strategist. He knew how to bring water in the way of Edom. He says, this is but a light thing in the presence of God. The God of Elijah opens a way where there seems to be no way. When Jordan was shut, Brother God had three men who humiliated Jordan in his overflooded state. First one was Joshua. He just opened Jordan like nothing. The next one was Elijah. The next one was Elisha. Showing that Jordan was now being opened like a normal door. It became, you know, a miracle can become so regularly done. You, you just open Red, Red Sea, shut it, open Jordan, shut it, open again and shut it. That God is the power to do it again today. The God of Elijah knows how to encourage his people when you are passing through your juniper. He knows how to arrange things for you. To help you to the mountain of God, to the mountain top experiences again. The God of Elijah delivers. When you are in, in trouble, you are saying, shoot the arrow of deliverance. So the God of Elijah answers by fire. When you call him, he likes showdowns. He was there on Mount Carmel showdown. When you call for a showdown in your life, he is there to answer. The God of Elijah restores. When, they were, when there is something that is stolen in your life, he is there to restore it. When there was death, he restored them to life. When there was even the, the, the meal that was used was restored. The God of Elijah heals incurable diseases. When Naaman had an incurable disease under the Elisha ministry, he was healed. The God of Elisha and Elijah descends. He knows what the king is speaking in secret. What demons are planning about your life, God hears and exposes the plan of the devil. The God of Elijah visits even nobodies. You know, you go to a widow of Sarepath. You go to the Shunammite woman. You will visit Sister Hetty's home. You will visit Auntie Jemima's home. You will visit widows and nobodies, but leave them with big testimonies. When he visited someone who had nothing, he left them with something for three and a half years. A continuous testimony for three and a half years. You know, you can experience an unending testimony the whole year, the next year, and another year, and another year. God is able to stretch your testimony until it's continuous. The, the God of Elijah, when he opens, no man can shut. Elijah could actually lock the heavens like that and say there shall be no rain until I call for it. Meaning if Elijah died, there will be no rain even today. Because he says until I call for it. But when Elisha came with a double portion, he says you Elijah called for three and a half years of, of drought. I'm going to call for seven years. So then he says you Elijah raised one dead person I'm going to raise two but he failed to raise the second one his bones did <laughs> his bones did <laughs> when they put the second one in his grave he resurrected the God of Elijah is a God that breaks records when there was no resurrection from Abel to the daughter to the son of the widow of Sarepath the first one was Elijah means to raise when there was no animal that rose from the dead in Bible times, Brother Branham came and said, little fish, I give you back your life. Amen. Elijah is a fearless anointing. Amen. That is the anointing released in the end times. And Elijah was dealing with kings. Do you know that Elijah is a major prophet but he doesn't have his own book. His book is book of kings. <laughs> because even the prophet was told you shall pray for kings and potentates. That's why Elijah will come to the kings and address King Ab. John the Baptist will come to Herod and address them. Abraham will come to kings and potentates. And today we are addressing kings and priests. Because the Elijah ministry is for kings and priests. 
So, is a God, the God of Elijah is a God of paradoxes. He was waiting for what looks impossible. But the amazing thing about Elijah, we, we don't know where he came from and where his, his history and his background is so he has no great background. It doesn't matter your background, but when God starts dealing with you, we just hear that Elijah the Tishbite. Well, maybe Tishbi, some of the historians say it's a place in, in Galilee. Well, it reminds us of the men of Galilee. That's why the miracles of Elisha under the, uh, uh, the anointing of Elijah are similar to the miracles of Christ. Elisha raises a widow's uh, son, Elijah, and then Christ does also raises the widow of Nain's son. Elisha heals leprosy and heals by saying, Go to a, a river. Christ comes also and heals even leprosy and heals blindness by saying, Go to the pool of Siloam, dip yourself. Uh, we see Elisha multiplying 12 loaves of bread to feed 100. And we see Christ also multiplying loaves of bread. That is the, the similarity of the ministry. That's why Elisha could multiply the oil and Christ multiplied the bread. And Christ also changed, multiplied the wine. So the ministries are very, very similar. The ministry of, because it's the spirit of Christ. So the Elijah ministry, uh, the uh, God of Elijah is a God of the rapture. Elijah is one of the few, I think it's him and Enoch, who did not test death. They were just changed like that. Amen. And we under the Elijah ministry also shall not test death. There are some here who shall not, when Christ said, there are some here who shall not see death until they see the Lord Christ. As soon as he said that, he says, after six days, in Matthew chapter 17, he went to Mount Transfiguration, and who appeared? Elijah and Moses because they are Moses representing those who died and who rise and then Elijah representing those who shall not die so Elijah ministry silences critics all those critics that were criticizing Elijah were silenced by the power of God actually the Bible says uh, that even those of the school of prophets in verse 15 them, the sons of the prophets which were at Jericho saw him, they say the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. It's not arguments that he won, but they saw the same miracles, same testimonies. You know, many people say the message is about teaching only. It's about deeper things. It's correct, but not the only part. It's not only that. The message is deep revelations of God, but it's not in word only, but it's in power and demonstration. Now, if the message is about deeper revelations, then we have all the revelations that we need in the tapes. We have no, I don't think there is a pastor who can come with a more, more, more deeper revelation except a continuation of what we have in the tapes. But why we come to church, we're coming to see the same message alive. But in terms of the what, what is in the message, we have it in books. All what we need for the rapture, we have it in the books. We don't need even a big somebody to come and say, it means this, it means that. We have it in the books, we have it in the tapes. But what we come here for is to see the same power rising from the courts. Rising from the scriptures. If you, if you don't know the power of God, you, you, you may despise the miracles and the paradoxes. Amen. But God, do you know that uh, me maybe as a, someone who went to university, who studied a lot in the medical, if I come before you just with my natural ability to study, you will say, this is deep. <laughs> yeah, I'm built that way. I read big books at the university. But what you cannot read, brother, is the supernatural if you do whatever you do and you explain whatever you explain and nothing happens that is not the God of the Bible 
every message, the tapes that I listen to, as soon as the prophet is done, you will say, you know who I'm waiting for. The angel of the message follows this message everywhere. I'm not saying that we, the believer must focus on signs and supernatural uh, things, but a believer is worried when the supernatural is not there. Those things, we don't follow them, but they follow us. I'm going to go to a tape very soon. Uh, I'm not going to take very long. I'm going to go to a tape very soon and show you that. A believer must have that association. The prophet actually says that there are some people who through their intellectual speeches can, can move nations Amen. by knowing brother, there are people who are theologians who can catch this I think today if maybe let's say who, maybe let's say Jonathan Moore if he repents and comes to the message and he comes now and says guys today I will take it from Genesis to Revelation, you will say this is what we need today Amen. what I would like to see after he has done everything is this sister who sat there with their condition when the waters were moved what happened to her situation I'm not putting the cart before the horses no um, I'm actually saying if the horses are pulling why is the cart not moving <laughs> if the word is correct if God be with us where are his miracles now as a married person myself I can tell you that anyone's pride is excited by the presence of that person not only my text messages I can text something when I'm out there in Canada and Sharon says powerful wow but she wants me at home <laughs> you can get a powerful revelation and say wow but we need Jesus in our midst. And God is known by his characteristics. It will take a scripturally trained church to know their position. Brother, even when the Hebrew mothers prophesied and said, Ephraim putting his feet in the oil, he still had to fight giants for him to step where he was positioned. So the God of Elijah is a God of divine acceleration. You could see him moving faster than chariots. When God of Elijah comes into your life, you can overtake things that were faster than you. He's a God with a track record. Everywhere where God is, and let me get this quotation, it's just, it keeps coming to my mind. You know, quotations... Uh, like a court, like a, a, a small, their wine, they can make you drunk. You, you don't need the whole court, you need just a lead. One court can knock you. It's very powerful. That is the message that we believe. It's pegged. The anointing that was there when it was given is there when we read it. The anointing that was in the prayer courts is still working in those prayer courts. The anointing that was in the tapes is still in those tapes. Let me just get to this. This quotation, uh, I will take it from If God be with us, that is Gideon, from paragraph 65. If God be with us, then where are his miracles? Um, maybe let me go backwards to where he talks about the messengers in paragraph 64. He says, Now there is a good way to trust whether the messenger is right or not. If you want to know the messenger is right or not, if he has a form of godliness he would deny that power to do miracles the prophet is saying throughout from Ephesus to Laodicea he says there is a way to know whether the messenger is right or not if he has a form of godliness mechanics only without the dynamics he would deny the power to do those miracles if he is a messenger from God he will not only speak of it but you will have it. There is a difference speaking about God of the Bible or having the God of the Bible. Difference speaking about the anointing, the Holy Ghost, and having the Holy Ghost. To produce it, to show that the God that he talks about is with him 
and in him. If you stand and talk about what you cannot reproduce, it's a scam. You are talking about what you don't have. And he says, if God be with us, where are all the mighty miracles? Because we understand, listen, how scriptural Gideon was. He was, scripture, he was not emphasizing on miracles, no. He was scriptural. In other words, we understand that God is a great God of mighty workings. He's a great God of miracles. If he is for us, if he is with us, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. Then where can I see his miracles? Where can I see this God in action? If you want to see God in action, don't look for him among the graves. He is alive. Find where the move of God is. There is no church that is correct, but there they are people who are correct. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame. And where two or three of those people are, he is there. See this God in action. The mighty man of valor could refer back to the old word. When you have a student of the scripture, refer back to how God did in the days of Brother Branham, in the days of Paul. Um, you could refer back to the old word and know it's right. Because you know this, God is a supernatural being. And where a supernatural being is, he will do supernatural signs. Because the supernatural is in him. You can't get out of it. How can you stand in the face of wind and not have wind blowing? How can you get in water without being wet? Water is wet. That's the chemistry of it. It is wet. And when you get in water, you're going to get wet. If you get where God is, there's going to be a sign. You can't just say, this thing, brother, I've studied it deep. It's H2O. And then you are dry. <laughs> I've studied the standards and the seals. This is the formula. This is how it is. First this, this happens, then that happens. Then you are dry. <laughs> the chemistry of it is that it is wet. When you get into the presence of God, the supernatural there is going to be supernatural signs and supernatural workings of a supernatural God. But don't get it wrong also that uh, because there are people who run after the supernatural and they get signs and sensations and they don't have anything of God. So the two, you cannot reject the word and run out of the, uh, after the supernatural. You cannot be excited by the supernatural and not excited by the word. Because the word brings the supernatural. So you must make love with the word. Make love with the quotes and scriptures. Then you will find that this same word is the same word is spirit and life. It's the same word that brings the results. So you cannot just say, where is the God of Elijah? When you have not been following Elijah. You cannot expect supernatural when you have not been following the word. So the word must make you meet requirements for the supernatural to happen. The word, if it tells you repent, you repent. If it tells you be baptized, you are baptized. If it says live right, you live right. Then you can now say, where is the God of the Bible? You cannot just go after the God of the Bible and reject the Bible. You cannot go after the power of the message and reject the message. You need to have precept upon precept, line upon line. You should be bathed in the word, in the waters of separation until your life is a very witness. That is the position where Elijah was. Elijah was when he says, I've followed this for six years. I've seen it not, never missing once. And I'm carrying the very quotations. I'm carrying the very scriptures. I've seen this God doing one, two, three. I've been anointed by this. But where is the God of Elijah? But if you are still, if he remained in Dothan, then he says, where is the God of Elijah? In Dothan. He had to progress. Progress in revelation. 
progress in the scriptures go for the deeper things of god go for the seals go for the church edges go for the seven weeks of daniel then when you have gone through when you have absorbed all what god is giving you can go for a showdown elijah restores the altar when he has restored the altar he says i've done this according to your word so father let the fire fall the fire doesn't just fall the prophet talks about a wildfire a revival that is not wet born where you are running wild after healings and deliverances and you have no appetite for the word you have to say i've repaired the altar i'm praying with my children at home i'm fasting i'm i'm meeting god's requirement i've been looking in his word what he wants me to be then now i've done this then you say father let the fire go um i was worried because my ticket to malawi when we we're now booking they say it is full and the brothers tried for malawi to book from there we noticed that the plane is full i just told them that no don't worry somehow i'm going to come because the god of elijah crowns planes and de- does what he does he has chariots he has a transport system to make you reach where you want to reach today i was i amazed them with the same ticket that they said is full it's full now because i'm inside no brother the the promises of god and the answers of god cannot close before you are inside the rapture express the chariots for the rapture cannot close before we are inside the holy ghost baptism cannot close before we are inside the movement to the gentiles cannot close before you are inside so today i'm saying go inside because the god of elijah is a god who changes the pace of things from the time of john the baptist before i mention this let me show you something crucial about the balance of the word and the supernatural do you know that john the baptist did not perform any miracle but is the greatest of all that ever lived uh, we have to balance things why is he the greatest because he introduced people to christ that is the biggest miracle that is the biggest any ministry that does any form of wonders if it doesn't point you to christ it's not a great ministry you see when elisha did double the miracles he took even john's share and john had no miracles anymore because elisha had done double what was supposed to be done god can give you a double portion more than super abundant more than what you can uh, even ask from the time of john the kingdom suffered violence and the violence take it by force now the ministry of elijah brings a double portion that's why we have the former and the latter reign combined we have the mechanics and the dynamics combined because he is the alpha and omega combined he is the root and offspring of david he is the author and finisher he is the cornerstone and the headstone so we you cannot separate those things when you put the word in order you have the dynamics in order so in the ministry of elijah you can't corner god you can't put him in a straight jacket if he came by wind the other day he may not come he may, you may see wind and he's not inside if he came by fire the other time you may see fire and he's not inside if another person received the holy ghost this way you may try that way and find that god is not there it has to be what god is doing that very time that very moment what i like about the ministry of elijah uh, the god of elijah he likes music you know that when he wanted to prophesy he says bring me a minstrel and the angel of the lord liked that song only believe all things are possible god likes good good music when i was in kenya 
There is a sister who came all the way from Uganda to attend the Kenya meetings. Your testimony was given even Pastor when I read it when we were in UK. It's a chain of a testimony. You wonder, is this one person we are now talking about the clan? It's a chain. When she came, she was wearing glasses. When we prayed for her, um, she could now see better without the glasses. Her BP disappeared, her backache disappeared, and the financial things were sorted, and uh, even was it acids? Whatever. It was a lot of things. You know, when God comes to you today, he doesn't wait for you to say one by one, I want this, I want... He knows what you want before you pray. Even if you forget something, if you didn't forget him, he will give you what you forgot. Your unspoken request shall be delivered supernaturally. That same God of Elijah who visits home should visit your home and give you unspoken desires. That God of Elijah is a God with creative power. Some of the testimonies that we hear are because of the power to create. How could you with 12 loaves feed 100? Some loaves were created. That, that God of Elijah was, he liked the waters. He liked the waters because actually the, the first miracle of Elisha is the last miracle of Elijah. Meaning Elijah, Elisha was continuing from Elijah. We must ride the trail. So when you see uh, God in the Jordan waters with Elijah, God in the Jordan waters with Elisha, God in Jordan River with John the Baptist, another Elijah, God in Ohio River with another Elijah, The first miracle of Elisha was about water opening the Jordan. His next miracle was healing the waters. His next miracle was the exit floating in the water. Actually, Elijah, the Elijah spirit is Christ in Elijah. It's not someone's spirit. It's, a, it's Christ's ministry. That's why the same God who made the Exhale head to float came back to walk on the water himself that is our God if you associate with that God you will see supernatural every day if you associate with that God you will see grace in your life every day if you associate with that God you will see regular routine of testimonies because the Elijah God of Elijah that deals with the impossibles Today, if you have a situation, I want to close very soon, that looks impossible, God will attend that situation. Amen. There are things that look like disappointments under the God of Elijah, but they are not. The God of Elijah allows the brook cherry to dry. It was given by him. He's the one who put you in that brook. He's the one who gave you that testimony. But because maybe you are, you are settling too much in that testimony, he allows that job to dry. He allows that seemingly miracle to dry. When he allows that, he has already prepared your next station. When you see what you are given by God, starting to have problems, it means God is saying, I have something better. I was saying one time that when John was invited by God he went in the spirit and landed in heaven and when he was rejoicing seeing the throne all of a sudden he starts crying in heaven you are now crying in the very job that you were rejoicing saying ah immediately I was in the spirit now he is crying inside what God gave him inside the marriage that God gave you you are now crying in, John did not say, ah, if heaven is like, I'm crying, let me go back to Patmos. He had to stay there. And all of a sudden, he saw the lion prevailing. Stay where God put you until he tells you where your answer shall come from. He is the God of Elijah. He is the God of impartation. What was in Elijah, we see it in Elijah. What was in Brother Branham, where is it today? 
I have a bit of a problem with uh, people limiting message believers when the messenger empowered them. People say, no, no, certain things are not for you. They are for the prophet. We understand. They are courts. We understand. But the prophet says, I desire to walk into a church that when sin is there, it shall be called out by who? By who? You can't limit the Holy Spirit when he's in the church. We don't have eight or five gifts of the Spirit. We have nine. And the one who gave those, no one can take them from the church. The prophet says, a church that doesn't have those ones shall answer. Uh, I don't know if we shall answer, brothers. Because those who have it are hiding in the church and they are afraid. Visions are not for prophets only. I can go through the scripture. Cornelius, before he received the Holy Spirit, he saw evidently about the ninth hour, God coming to him saying, Cornelius, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. He didn't at that time. He received it later when Peter, while, while Peter had spake. And Jemima, she even knew about the briefcase of the prophet. Now, if you want to limit yourself, find the corner where you can go and limit yourself. If you see a promise and you don't have faith enough to walk into that level, don't stop those with faith enough to go there. Ananias. The Bible says Ananias was just a disciple. But he saw in a vision. I'm not saying look for visions. They find you when God wants. Because if you start looking for those things, you go on a deep end. If you start looking for audible voice, we have an audible tape. Don't start looking for audible voices. And, oh, that was God? Maybe it was your neighbor. Maybe it was someone. You, you are okay with God and his word and the supernatural following you but don't venture into the sensations and isms and looking for oils and bloods and things those are enticing spirits but also be worried as a believer if there is nothing following you except arguments that you are right <laughs> because there are some who signs are not there but wonders yeah I'm wondering, of course, why they, they keep arguing that we are right, others are wrong. We are right, others are wrong. They, those are wonders following you. But signs and wonders must follow a believer. Let me close. Let me close. Our God knows us. What I like about the God of Elijah, he can deal with one man. One man in the hands of God. Elijah was enough as an army. But he then discovered that even if I am doing this alone, I'm not alone. There is 7,000 others. We have the same rapture expectation we have. There is 7,000 others who have the burden for the loss that we have. So, Elijah, he was a man of like passion as we are. Prophets are not born and they just fall from the sky and they say, that's it, the Lord. They also have hard times. They also have ups and downs. But they are used mightily of God. He was a, a man of like passion. And one of the mysteries, let's, let me read this scripture so that I show you another mystery. About even if Elijah is gone, you can hear from Elijah even when he's gone. Second Chronicles chapter 21 verse 12. It says, there came a letter from Elijah to the king Jehoram. We know that when king Jehoram reigned, Elijah yet gone, long gone. Even Jehoshaphat had died at that time. And this was not in the days of Elijah. But the letter from Elijah answered the situation at that time. Even if Elijah is gone, there is a court from Elijah that can answer your situation at this time. Because the God of Elijah is there when Elijah is gone. The possibility to explain 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 12, is that 
possibly that letter was prophetically written before Elijah was gone. Then it came alive when the situation arose because the end time message will meet end time conditions. There is a scripture that was written before you were in that situation but it comes alive when you meet that situation. Let's stand to our feet so that I can be able to close. One thing I admire about Elijah is his confidence with his God. When it's time for a showdown, if it was me versus prophets of Baal, let's say prophets of Baal are Sikamtandas and Sangomas, and I say, do your things. Me, I'm carrying my Bible and say, I'm going to see who, who is God. Call the strongest Nganga and strongest witch doctor, do your things. At that time when I'm waiting for my turn, I'll be in deep consecration. Not when, wanting to say something wrong. <laughs> Trying to feel the presence of God. But Elijah was called, he was laughing, saying, maybe your God has taken a journey. Maybe your God is asleep. He would laugh about it, say, maybe he's pursuing. <laughs> he didn't try to be consecrated. He knew that God is with me here. Even if I laugh, I'm laughing strong. Even if I'm joking, I'm joking strong. God is with me. That man was at confidence with God. That's the confidence we need in any situation. That even if the devil reminds you something, you say, shut up, Satan, it's under the blood. I'm not basing on my abilities or emotions. I have confidence with God. That is the God that we worship. The Elijah ministry is a, it likes three pools. The first pool of Elijah, he was fed by the ravens. You see, the God of Elijah gives answers from unexpected sources. Ravens don't usually give. And those who don't usually give those visas will give you that visa. <laughs> God gives answers from unexpected sources. Those who are they are the ones who give you the answer the second pool of Elijah he was now being fed from the wheat of Sarepath the third pool he was eating from angels so you see your experience you keep going higher and higher don't stay in the same level of testimonies but go higher and higher in God if you are here today and you are facing a situation where you are saying, where is the God of Elijah? What you have to do is to keep believing. Keep expecting it. Keep confessing. Keep holding on. Keep declaring it. Keep prophesying it. Keep knocking in the door. And keep praying and keep pushing. Keep going forward. Keep praising. And keep consecration. Keep te testifying. Keep checking your answer. Because in the God of Elijah, what was happening when they were praying for rain, they kept checking. When you are praying for your answer, keep checking. And then you will see that a, when there is a small movement, little is much when God is in it. Today, maybe you have a need or you have a desire. We have to say, where is the God of Elijah? But the reality I've seen in life is that many times when we are saying, where is the God of Elijah? The God of Elijah is saying, Adam, where are you? He's the one who is saying, where is that brother? And you are saying, where is God? You are in a bush. Some Imagine Adam and Eve in a bush saying, where is the God of Eden? <laughs> Inside that bush. It means you, you are the one who moved away from him. Come back to him. Come back to consecration. Come back to living right. Come back to fasting and praying. Come back to calling for a showdown. Then that God will answer you. Let's close our eyes, each one praying in their own way. Our Heavenly Father, we realize the lateness of the time. We realize, Father, that you are a present help in time of need. And you can never fail your children. But many times we fail you. Many times, Father, we fail to meet your requirements. But, Father, you are a God of mercy. You are a God full of love. I pray, Father, that you meet every situation today. Every obstacle that your children are facing. May you move those obstacles. Father, you are God that provides. You are God that even visits the homes. You are God that does the impossible. You are God that specializes in things not impossible. 
Father, we call you on the scene. We raise you from history. We say, may the God of the Bible come back to meet your children. Father, the same way we saw you turning the temples there in Tanzania. We saw you, Lord Father, doing the impossible things. I'm praying that that same God will start moving elements in the life of your people, in the life of the believers, to give them, Father, every need. There are some with sick relatives who are saying, Lord Father, may you touch my relatives. Father, we call you on the scene to move. Lord Father, there is a request for a brother who is admitted at Timpilo at, at there. May you heal and deliver. There are many unspoken requests here, Lord Father, financially and spiritually. May you intervene, Father, that your people may know that you are the God that answers by fire. That people may know that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Keep us, Lord Father, true, walking in your statutes, walking in your ways, that, Father, we may find favor in your, in your sight. We may find grace, Lord Father, to live, Lord Father, that life where we shall not see death, but we shall be transformed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. I pray, Father, that you prepare us for that rapture moment where the chariots of heaven will come, Lord Father, and we say, swing low, sweet chariot. Father, I pray that if there be any sick person today, may you heal them, may you deliver them, may you Take them to a new level, O oh Lord. Father, your God who provided using even ravens, provided using a widow with nothing, provided even using angels. Father, may you provide. You, Father, you have a million ways of answering your people. I pray, Father, that whatever battles they are facing, may there be another Mount Carmel showdown where God of heaven will crush all prophets of Baal. You will crush every, every critic, Lord Father, that rises against your people every tongue that rises in judgment against them they shall condemn it father may you open doors for them the same way you open jordan river open a way where there is no way you are still the same father yesterday to and forever may you intervene may you meet the challenge of the hour may you meet every situation may you meet every need heavenly father you are god and you cannot fail as gideon says if god be with us where are his miracles father may we see your performance may we see your miracles but father teach us to be a scripturally trained church not only following after signs and wonders but father only following your word and seeing your supernatural presence doing the miraculous father anchoring us in the promise of the hour anchoring us lord father in this divinely revealed mystery truths that will literally turn the hearts of the children to the fathers heavenly father i pray that your anointing will come upon your people today and answer them in jesus name amen god bless you we've come to the end of the service but if there be somebody maybe who is a still a newcomer who needs to be prayed for i don't want to pray for many people i want to also rest and prepare but why i take these things serious healing and uh, it's because if you are not sick you may think healing is a small thing but the moment you are sick if you are under attack like the other family that phoned, phoned me saying things are running in our house and we are seeing things like aliens running in our house if you are not in that situation you would despise deliverance because nothing is running in your house if you are not sick and you the moment you are sick, those who have been sick, they know how big healing is. So let's not minimize those things. They are children's food. It's the earnest of the rapture. If God is going to change this body, he heals the body. And one thing I would be honest about is that um, no matter how scholar you are, if, if you crank and do whatever, you cannot read the supernatural. If someone is sick today and we pray for them, if nothing happens, we can't rig it. If something happens, we must accept that this is not a man. Because doctors have failed and people have failed. If something happens, we must admit that this is beyond man. From Brother Akison, I would like to thank the Lord for he has given me a job in Zinshavan. I will be starting on the 1st of September. I'm happy because I'm joining my family full time after three years. Thank you, church, for the wonderful time.
God bless you. He, he has to stand up. Let him stand up. <laughs> We are happy but not happy. <laughs> Very happy though. Yet not happy. <laughs> we want to hear forever but we thank God for, he, for such testimony. It's good to be with your family forever. Uh, God bless you. We will sing as we dismiss. Right. I wanted to announce I'll do it maybe next uh, let me just throw a bit of it we want to start our building program so when I come back we want to set our building committee we won't be in this place forever we want to now have our own place I thought number 7 is too small for us so we're going to buy here in town a very a bigger place and start building so this is our plan from January to be building a tabernacle. We won't be renting forever. When this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another one waiting for us. Hallelujah. Amen. We blessed. Amen. We we'll sing as we go out. Amen. Got any rivers you think they uncrossable? Go to any mountains you can't tunnel through. God specializes in things thought impossible. And he will do what no other power. Got any river you think they uncrossable. Go to any mountains you can't tunnel through. God specializes in things thought impossible. Oh, and he would do no other. Be of good, be of good courage. The God's back to Joshua. When over the river God pointed the way Jordan uncrossable Things seemed impossible Waters divide and they match way Got any river Oh you think there Got any mountains Oh you can't our God specializes 